I haven't seen a penny since the Chinese New Year, and I still owe 20,000 yuan on my credit card. I feel like a widow. During the pandemic, business was difficult, but there's even less business after the pandemic. It's too difficult. Even living like a widow, there are people taking advantage of you. Nowadays, clothes in brick and mortar stores cost dozens of yuan apiece, and a cup of milk tea costs 10 yuan or 20 yuan. A few sips, and it's gone. Your children wear clothes that cost tens of yuan and last for a few months. Everything's too expensive and too difficult. In 2024, the status of the physical economy remains a topic of discussion. Let's take a look at the current situation of commercial shops in Guangzhou, one of China's top-tier cities. What you see now is a sports center in Guangzhou. Anyone who has been to the Guangzhou Sports Center knows that the sports center is a business district. There's still a lot of traffic nearby, and the economic growth here is ranked among the highest in Guangzhou. Firstly, because everyone knows that the sports center is a gathering place for rich people. According to relevant data, Guangzhou's GDP in 2023 will reach 3 trillion yuan, a year-on-year -year growth of 5.26%, and the per capita GDP will reach over 150,000 yuan. This growth figure is much higher than last year. Based on such growth data, Guangzhou's economy is pretty good. Compared with the whole country, it is relatively good. Now, as you can see in the video, it's already noon, but the shops are still not open for business. Is it that they are not worried about money, or that the traffic flow is insufficient, or that they are in a state of bankruptcy and transfer? This is a bit puzzling. What you're seeing now is Wu Yue Jin Street in Changchun, northeast China. The situation is not much different from the shops near the Guangzhou Sports Center. It's a weekend around 7 o'clock. It is not completely dark around 7 o'clock. And you can see that there are almost no people on this street. The street at the back is the snack street and the pedestrian street. Weekends are the time when there are the most people, but there is no one here. Many shops are not rented out and stand empty. Some of the places that are occupied have their doors closed. This has been the case for more than half a year. One can imagine how difficult it is to work in the physical economy now. The whole thing is terribly depressing. The physical economy seems beyond recovery, with a grim situation from Guangzhou in the south to Changchun in the northeast. Regardless of the size of city, street-side shops, commercial districts, and pedestrian streets are struggling. Urban centers are eerily quiet, contradicting official claims of a booming domestic economy. Mainland financial experts agree that China's economy is plunging into a major depression. On April 16th, all branches of a Shanghai urban supermarket suddenly closed, with the supermarket citing continuous losses as the reason. This supermarket was one of the largest imported food and daily goods supermarkets in Shanghai and the Yangtze River Delta region. Recently, several well-known chain brands in China have closed some of their stores. While this may seem sudden, it appears inevitable. One consumer mentioned that during the Chinese New Year period, they visited one of these supermarkets and found it eerily deserted, which felt unusual. After enduring three years of the pandemic, Shanghai and the entire commercial sector in China have been severely impacted. Voice of America recently published an article by a Shanghai political scholar using the pseudonym Jiang Feng, titled, The Great Depression is Here, a Historic Moment of Shanghaiification. The article describes the atmosphere on the eve of the Chinese New Year as particularly eerie, as if the people are facing an unprecedented Great Depression that they are powerless against. The most obvious sign is the record number of businesses and factories closing early or going on holiday. Bosses closing their business and running away became a new normal. The article suggests that an economy driven by power rather than the market is becoming the new norm in China. The past decade fundamentally wrecked China, reflected in a decline of the country's economy and politics. According to the annual reports from listed companies in the Chinese department store and supermarket sector, over 70% of enterprises have experienced a significant year-on-year -year decline in net profit. Closures and shutdowns have become widespread. As early as 2022, performance dropped for three major old-fashioned department store listed companies in Shanghai. Among them, in 2022, Shanghai Jiubai achieved revenue of 685 million yuan, a year-on-year -year decrease of 30%, and a net profit attributable to the parent company of 52.3 million yuan, a year-on-year -year decrease of 49%. 
Shi Jiahui, achieved revenue of 481 million yuan, a year-on decrease of 22 percent, and a net profit attributable to the parent company of 245 million yuan, a year-on decrease of 76 percent. Compared with the above two companies, although the revenue of New World decreased the least year on year, its net profit attributable to the parent company decreased the most. At the same time, New World is the only enterprise among the three that suffered its first loss since listing. In 2022, New World's revenue was 850 million yuan, a year-on-year decrease of 27 percent. Net profit attributable to the parent company. Was negative 52 million yuan, a year-on-year decrease of negative 175 percent, according to a report by the Time Daily. Shanghai Jiubai, Shi Jiahui, and New World are located in the three major commercial centers of Jing'an District, Shi Jiahui, and Nanjing Road in Shanghai, respectively. Their performance is a reflection of the dilemma facing department stores and supermarkets nationwide. Da Liu Tak, a financial influencer with 3.84 million followers, recently released a video stating that although there was a consumption rebound during the Chinese New Year this year, massive consumption is hiding a larger economic contraction. This is what is meant by the lipstick economy. He stated that even the poor can spend within their means to stimulate the consumption market. This can accelerate wealth circulation within the country. He emphasized that in the current situation in China, the recovery of consumption is crucial. And can be considered a matter of national destiny, with the irreversible trend of decoupling traditional economic ties between the West and China. Stimulating domestic consumption is of great significance. Chinese retail giant Suning.com recently released its financial report, showing a net loss of over 4 billion yuan in 2023, with a total loss of over 67.4 billion yuan over four years. Another retail giant, Gomi Retail, also reported a double decline in performance this year. With a net loss exceeding 10 billion yuan, on March 29, Suning.com Group Company Limited released its performance announcement, reporting a revenue of 62.6 billion yuan in 2023, a year-on-year decrease of 12.3 percent, and a net loss attributable to shareholders of the listed company for 4 billion yuan. According to the financial report, the net profit was a loss of 16.2 billion yuan in 2022, a loss of 43.3 billion yuan in 2021, and a net loss of 3.9 billion yuan in 2020. From 2020 to 2023, Suning.com has accumulated a total loss of over 67.4 billion yuan. In addition, Suning.com's chain supermarket Carrefour China has closed over 100 stores. As of the end of 2023, Suning. Suning.com's total assets were 121.7 billion yuan, a year-on-year -year decrease of 13 percent, and the net assets attributable to shareholders of the listed company were 11.4 billion yuan, a year-on-year -year decrease of 29 percent. Gomi Retail incurred a net loss of over 10 billion yuan last year and a total loss of over 41.4 billion yuan over four years. Another retail giant, Gomi Electrical Appliances Holding Limited, announced its 2023 annual performance on March 28th, showing a revenue of 647 million yuan last year, a decrease of 96 percent, and a full-year net loss attributable to the parent of 10 billion yuan, a 50 percent narrowing year on year. The financial report shows that Gomi Retail has a net loss attributable to the parent of 20 billion yuan in 2022, a net loss of 4.4 billion yuan in 2021, and a net loss of 7 billion yuan in 2020. From 2020 to 2023, Gomi Retail has accumulated a net loss of over 41 billion yuan. At the same time, Gomi Retail is burdened with massive debts and litigation, according to Securities Daily. As of March 29, Gomi is trying to resolve its debt issues by increasing the disposal and realization of non-core assets, raising funds, and negotiating with. With creditors to promote debt to equity swaps, the high level of debt remains a major challenge for Gomi. According to Gomi Retail's announcement, as of February 29, 2024, its overdue interest-bearing bank and other borrowings, including payable bonds, totaled 19.3 billion yuan. As of the end of 2023, Gomi Retail's current liabilities amounted to 38.3 billion yuan. To address the current operational challenges, Gomi Retail stated that it will strive to consolidate its its main business, focus on live streaming, and accelerate the development of innovative formats such as unmanned retail and automobile experience halls.
A person close to Gomi told Yi Tsai on March 28th that Gomi plans to develop an unmanned retail business, and its annual report reveals that Gomi Retail will establish a new Gomi Electrical Appliances division. Last year, Gomi Electrical Appliances downsized its stores and transformed into a live streaming e commerce platform. Whether Gomi can save itself remains to be seen. According to its announcement, affected by funding constraints and the reduction to the scale of its retail network, Gomi Retail's operating scale has experienced a significant decline. In 2022, Gomi Retail sales revenue was still 17 billion yuan, but last year it was only slightly larger than the previous year's. As of February 29th, 2024, Gomi Retail was involved in 990 pending litigation cases involving an amount of 4.54 Billion yuan, those of which involving banking and financial institutions totaled 2.9 billion yuan. The total number of cases with court judgments reached 922, involving an amount of approximately 13 billion yuan. As of February 29, 2024, Gomi Retail had frozen funds totaling 114 million yuan. Financial influencer Miracle Brew. Recently stated that the biggest problem facing Chinese people now is the three major capital surpluses caused by a crisis of trust. He said the first surplus is industrial capital surplus. The entire Chinese manufacturing industry is in surplus, with many industries operating at less than 50% capacity or even as low as 20%. There is insufficient demand, people don't have money, and the products cannot be sold, resulting in overcapacity. Except for some industries that have not been deregulated, capital in all industries is in surplus with insufficient orders and low profits, causing foreign capital to withdraw and unemployment to increase. The decrease in demand further reinforces the surplus of production capacity. The second surplus is financial capital surplus. The deposits of many banks are greater than their loans. Enterprises are not investing and residents are not consuming. This money is not flowing into the real economy, but is circulating within the financial system. Banks cannot lend out the money, but still have to pay interest, resulting in a surplus of financial capital. The third surplus is commercial capital surplus. There are now malls everywhere, pharmacies, hotels, and milk tea shops. In 2012, there were 420,000 pharmacies, and by the end of 2022, there were 620,000. On one street alone, there are at least four or five pharmacies. On April 16th, Sheng Lai Yun, deputy director of China's National Bureau of Statistics, stated at a press conference that in the first quarter, the National Urban Survey unemployment rate averaged 5.2 percent, a decrease of 0.3 percentage points from the same period last year. In March, The National Urban Surveyed Unemployment Rate was 5.2 percent, a decrease of 0.1 percentage points from the previous month and the same month last year. There is a structural contradiction in employment. On one hand, there is a shortage of frontline blue collar workers and skilled workers. On the other hand, there is a greater employment pressure on young college graduates. This year, 11.8 million college graduates entered the labor market. Sheng Lai Yun stated that from the situation in the first quarter, the youth unemployment rate has slightly increased. According to data from the National Bureau of Statistics, the unemployment rate for 16 to 24 year olds in urban areas, excluding students, was 14.6% in January, 15.3% in February, and the data for March has not yet been released. After the unemployment rate for the 16 to 24 age group soared to a historic high of 21.3% in June last year, the authorities suspended the Publication of this data, causing great concern internationally. Life Week magazine published an article last year which reported that during the most difficult employment season, many young people left their homes and came to Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen to seek more job opportunities. Youth hostels have become their best choice for settling in big cities due to their low cost and live as you go model. Those who wander in the city center are chronically unemployed, but still full of expectations. With some ending up wandering back home. The magazine interviewed two young people looking for work in Guangzhou. Huang Xing, 28, from Guangxi, graduated in 2018 from a prestigious university in southwestern China with a major in automation. After graduation, he went to work for an internet plus real estate company, but resigned for personal reasons. He then started an educational institute with friends with a good income, but lost his job under the dual reduction policy last year. 
Huang Xing decided to seek opportunities in the big city of Guangzhou. He rented a room in a youth hostel in the city center for 70 yuan a day. He ate only two meals a day, with an average expenditure of less than 100 yuan per day. However, he did not find a job for a whole month. Huang Xing can still support himself for a while with his savings, but he is not sure if he can find a job in Guangzhou or how long he will have to stay. Although he says he is taking a break, he finds it difficult to truly relax. Zhang Wen, 24, from Nantong, Jiangsu, graduated from a key national university in Nantong with a major in management, but failed the postgraduate entrance exam. He has changed jobs several times in Guangzhou, working as an insurance agent and financial salesperson. He has been unemployed for about three months. Zhang Wen lives in a youth hostel that costs 60 yuan per day, and now it is becoming difficult for him to save money. He goes to the library to drink free water, only one meal a day, and sometimes walks three or four kilometers from the youth hostel to the nearby food wholesale market to buy biscuits or instant noodles to fill his stomach. During the interview, he also opened his refrigerator and pointed to the rice dumplings that had been there for two weeks and said, I can rely on them for a few more days this week. In January this year, the National Bureau of Statistics released the youth unemployment rate data for December last year. The adjusted statistics do not include students. On various social media platforms, a large number of netizens complained about the visible depression in various industries, including store closures, business failures, significant drops in property prices, and experiences of unemployment and stock market losses. Qi Tian, certified as the general manager of Beijing Eastern Pureland Technology Company Limited, recently released a video saying that he saw an old lady rummaging through a trash can. He asked her what she was looking for, and she said she was looking for empty bottles to sell. Her son is getting married and still has a mortgage to pay off. She sells empty bottles to help him reduce some pressure. Chi Tian said the reality is that poor people are already exhausted just by living. However, the fresh data from China's statistical department still claims economic growth of 5.3%, exceeding market expectations. This sparked a wave of criticism from netizens in the comments. They said, For decades, we have always been winners, never losers. The economy is getting better and better, but finding a job is getting harder and harder. I don't even believe it myself. No matter how beautiful the data is, reality gives a resounding slap in the face. According to Bloomberg, China has set a record for the longest consecutive decline in the Consumer Price Index since 2009, starting from December last year. Another record is in services, including education, healthcare, and takeout. In December last year, its inflation rose by 1%. Although it did not experience a decline, it basically did not grow either, indicating that the Chinese economy has not shown any improvement or rebound after the pandemic. While the West is experiencing inflation, China is experiencing deflation. The result of deflation is a depression. The government is ramping up efforts to print money and stimulate the economy. The central bank continues to cut interest rates and reserve requirements, but in the end, it has not achieved good results. It continues to be in a depression process. After the money is printed and flows into the entire society, it does not circulate but only ends up in the pockets of a few. The biggest problem with China's economy today is consumption, and the biggest problem with consumption is that people are unwilling or unable to spend money. The root cause is that the government has not truly addressed the people's livelihood issues, and the entire country is serving a few interest groups. 